we wrap up this program, I'd like to ask each of you to provide some final takeaways regarding what we covered in this program. Josh, let me start with you. Oh, so I think that the key thing that I keep coming back to when considering um, advanced therapeutics for patients with head and neck cancer, and specifically to immunotherapy as we have this explosion of new treatments, is the importance of coming back to the science and identifying biomarkers that can help to predict who will benefit from a given treatment. And I think that exploring that in concert with the development of a trial is really critical and will enhance the likelihood that our trials will be positive and that we'll be able to benefit patients. Thanks. Barbara? So um, I, I love the discussion of biomarkers. I think that there are a lot of clinical features that we can use to personalize therapy as well. And um, we talked earlier about uh, locally advanced treatment and how perhaps the goals are different in HPV positive and HPV negative, where with HPV negative we still fail to cure the majority of patients and we need to look at uh, more perhaps molecular specificity to what we do, uh, ways that we can combine modalities to, to improve our response rate, probably uh, be introducing immuno-oncology earlier in, in um, the management of HPV negative uh, patients in short order. Um, and then in the HPV positive patients where uh, at least for the patients who don't have bulky disease and who are non-smokers, we're curing very many of them. What can we do to make sure that two years out they aren't still having neck and shoulder pain or not willing to eat solid foods in front of other people and, and um, uh, having trouble getting back to work, those sorts of things. So um, there are many, many different strategies which offer promise for deintensification. I think all of them have a future. I don't think it's only going to be that we're going to drop platinum or we're going to reduce the radiation dose or everybody's going to get transoral surgery. But I think we're going to learn a lot more about how to pick our deintensification strategy for a given patient. Jared, let me turn to you. So we've spoken today about a lot of positive clinical trials that have changed our practice in advanced care. And the pace of these, um, you could call it overwhelming or inspiring, depending what kind of mood uh, you're in. But uh, I think for any given clinical trial going on, there are so many going on now that have a higher probability of being positive and really helping that individual patient who goes on than perhaps historically was true and had a neck cancer. And so I would end with a plug uh, that to consider clinical trials for your patients and to consider them much earlier in their course than you might have before. I think sometimes we consider clinical trials when all else has failed and there's nothing that can be done as standard of care, but some of the first line trials and curative trials that going are, are going on now are incredibly high probability for curing more people with less morbidity, and I think they should be thought of as uh, quite a bit earlier than we traditionally have. It's certainly an exciting time. And so on behalf of our panel of experts, we thank you for joining us for this peer exchange expert discussion.